This video is for education and entertainment purposes only. Please consult with your healthcare provider before making any changes to your health plan. Hey beautiful soul, it's Jacqueline from the Las Livia Chronicles in partnership with Lichen Sclerosis Support Network. If you have lichen sclerosis and are looking to empower yourself with information, find acceptance and reclaim your life, then please subscribe to our channel and keep on watching. And if you have a friend or family member, loved one with lichen sclerosis, and you want to learn more about the physical and mental health aspects of living with LS so that you can better support them in their journey, then please subscribe to our channel as well and please share it with them. All right, so today we are addressing a topic that we definitely hear a lot in support groups and online forums, definitely something that a lot of people have a lot of questions about and are seeking support with, but it's also a topic that doctors don't really address in the doctor's office. And the reason for that is probably because there's just no research on this. Um, research tends to focus on pathology and diagnosis and treatment options, but there is some research on lifestyle, but not as much, right? So what we're going to be discussing today is exercising and lichen sclerosis. Can you exercise with lichen sclerosis? Should you need, you know, should you? And what do you kind of need to know? What are some important tips and tricks to help you manage exercising with lichen sclerosis or to reincorporate exercise back into your routine if you've stopped exercising because of your lichen sclerosis? So this is going to be a two-part video. So for today, I'm going to share some tips and tricks about exercising with lichen sclerosis, and then I'm going to demo a little exercise routine that you can um, follow or you can just kind of pick and choose what you like, what you don't like. That's totally cool. For today's video, all the exercises that I will be doing will be demonstrated in a seated position. So this is really good if you maybe tear a lot and or are concerned about tearing or if you have kind of general irritation. So one thing that can cause irritation and especially so if you have lichen sclerosis is friction. So these are exercises that will have minimal friction on the vulva and that are very accessible. You can do it in your chair, you could do it at home, you could do it at a gym, on a bench, etc. And then in part two, I'm going to do a standing and lying down series because I know there are a lot of folks that have pain with sitting or don't like to be sitting for prolonged periods of time. So that's going to be part two. And of course, you can mix and match and borrow from each and sprinkle in your own exercises that you enjoy. Everything is fair game. This is really just to give you an idea of some movement that you can do. Now, full disclaimer, I am not I am not a personal trainer. I have no credentials in that area. I don't have a background in kinesthesiology. I am just a person who loves to be super active and who loves movement. So that's what we are going to do in this video today. This is going to be mostly kind of weighted and resistance and somewhat cardiovascular type workout. If you're looking for other workouts, I do have a video on swimming with lichen sclerosis. I'll leave a card up here and I will also leave that linked in the description box below if you want to check that out. Another option that I won't be doing demoing is yoga. There are all types of yoga out there. They're not all those quick flowy classes, right? So there are some more restorative um, versions. One version that I love to do is pelvic floor yoga, which I do in the pelvic health yoga membership, which is run by Penny, who also happens to have lichen sclerosis and overactive pelvic floor. So I do my restorative pelvic yoga over there. If you're interested in joining that membership, I will leave a link in the description box below. And you can also use my discount code Jacqueline, J-A-C-L-Y-N, at the checkout to get a seven day free trial and 30% off of your first month. Finally, another option, um, the Lichen Sclerosis Support Network does have a membership, which you can join by giving a monthly or annual donation. And in the membership, amongst 
a bajillion other things, but we're just going to focus on exercise. Um, we have classes in there that you can join. That's part of the membership. They're called Wild Soul Movement, and they're basically a mixture of like yoga and gentle stretching and dancing and mantras and breathing. So it's a little bit all in one, but it's a great way to get a workout in to kind of reconnect with your body in a slow, gentle way. So that's also an option for you. I will leave a link for the membership down in the description box below if you want to join. Um, that is it for this very long intro. Um, let's jump into things. And of course, as always, if you find the information in this video helpful, then please give us a subscribe. Please leave this video a like. And if you have any topic requests for me, please leave them in the comment section below. I love getting your requests and I always put them in my content calendar and I will absolutely get to making that video for you. So with that, let's jump into things. So before we jump into the exercise demos, I do want to give a couple tips and tricks before we kind of jump into those, you know, exercises. And the first one, the first tip that I have is to go slow and to listen to your body. Each and every one of us is in a different phase of our lichen sclerosis journey. Some people might be more symptomatic than others. Some people might be more nervous about exercise. Some people might be like, pro athletes and some people might have never exercised a day in their life now given that wide variety of people and starting points this means that everybody is going to be different everyone's exercise and alice journey is going to be different one thing that i always recommend for people that are looking to reintroduce or start physical activity after being diagnosed with lichen sclerosis is to take things slow there can be a tendency for us to push through because we just want to you know, get to that end result. But sometimes when we push through, we can injure ourselves um, and make things worse. So if you're starting off just a slow, gradual buildup, just to give an example, because that advice is really vague without me saying an example. When I was diagnosed with lichen sclerosis, if you've watched my diagnosis story, and if you haven't, I will leave a card up here and linked below, but um, I was very symptomatic when I was diagnosed. I had very strong itch and I had a lot of pain. So with that, I actually thought that I couldn't exercise until I asked my doctor and he was like, no, no, please exercise. Exercise is very important and good for stress moderation. It's good for cardiovascular health, for bone and muscle health. It's good for the overall body. He's like, I highly encourage you to exercise and not cut that out. So I was like, okay, fair. I was almost excited because I love exercising, but I was also really afraid because I was still experiencing pain. And if I wasn't experiencing pain, I was worried that exercising would cause a flare. So I started slow. I started really, really slow. The first thing I did, I thought I'm going to play with walking. And so I used to walk like two, three, four hours a day. Sometimes like I love walking. I don't own a car and I live in a big city. I walk everywhere. My appointment at the hospital is two hours to there. No problem. I'll walk it. Um, that's just how I am. But instead of starting with a big two hour walk, or even an hour walk, I started by saying, I'm going to take a walk around the block. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. One walk around the block for a couple of weeks. And then when I started to grow comfortable and feel more confident with that, I did two laps around the block for a few more weeks. And then when that started to feel safe in my body, I started saying, okay, let's try 30 minutes. And I gradually built it up. Now you don't have to follow how I did that with respect to how many weeks and how much time, but the point is it was a gradual reintroduction. So I didn't kind of overload and shock my system. It was very slow. And that's something that I just happen to know works for me and my body because I like baby steps. I like things to be a gentle transition instead of a huge shock to my system. So always take things slowly and always, always listen to your body. If your body is screaming hard no, listen to it, respect it, back off. Now building on that, tip number two is to modify. So let's say you are doing a lunge, right? And your body is like, absolutely not, ma'am, absolutely not. This is not a thing we're doing right now. I might say, okay, I'm gonna back off. 
But backing off doesn't necessarily mean that I throw my hands up and I say, I'm not going to exercise. I'm leaving the gym. This is it, right? Backing off instead can be something more gentle, like, okay, I'm not going to do a lunge exercise. Instead, I'm going to focus on calf raises or something that's more accessible. Maybe I'll work out my upper body or maybe I'll modify the lunge in a way where, you know, I don't feel as much irritation in the vulvar area or in a way that doesn't cause me as much pain. So backing off and listening to your body sometimes just means modifying your plan. Whatever you planned on doing, it just means changing stuff up a little bit in a way that really respects what your body needs. Cool. Tip number three, lube up. Yes. Moisturize that vulva. So when we're working out, a lot of exercise creates friction, right? Our legs are kind of rubbing together that groin and that vulva. There's a lot of rubbing involved, right? When we're walking, we're moving around. There's a lot of friction. Now, friction can cause irritation in anyone, frankly. It doesn't mean that you need to have lichen sclerosis. A lot of friction can cause irritation for any vulva. But especially if we have lichen sclerosis, we want to make sure that we're doing our best to reduce that friction and take some of that friction away. Now, one great way to do that is to make sure that you're using a vulvar emollient beforehand or even a vulvar barrier. So if you're new and you're like, what the heck is a vulvar emollient or moisturizer? I don't know what that is. I have a longer video where I explain what those are. And so I'm going to pop a card up here and a link in the description box below so you can learn more about um, vulvar emollients. So take a look at that video after we're done with this video. But if you know me and you've been hanging around for a while, you know my favorite moisturizer for down there is just coconut oil. It's cheap and it's accessible and it works for me and my body. So before I work out, I apply a really nice amount of coconut oil. Like I am not shy, okay? I'm just like, scoop it and just yeah everywhere so i am fully protected now this helps physically by making movement like friction a lot more comfortable and a lot less irritating but it also helps me mentally because it gives me the sense that i'm like extra protected and so that kind of creates this idea of safety in my head and that idea of safety makes me feel more comfortable doing some of those movements. So I like to do it before I work out. And sometimes like I always have like a little jar of coconut oil in all my bags. So if I'm really working out and like mid-workout, I'm starting to feel a little bit dry, starting to feel a little bit irritated. I'll finish my set. I'll go to the bathroom. I'll reapply some vulvar moisturizer and then I'll be like, okay, great. Continue my workout at the end. I put a little bit more on. Then I go home, shower, reapply. So when it comes to working out, moisturizer can absolutely be your friend. Tip number four, use private packs or a perineal ice pack. Now you're like, maybe what is a perineal ice pack or what is a private pack? I don't know what you're talking about. No problem. So essentially a perineal ice pack is an ice pack that's designed to fit the vulva and perianal area. These can be sold for a number of reasons like pain and trauma post birth or vaginismus, any kind of pelvic floor issues, lichen sclerosis, vulvar itch, burning and inflammation. These are good for all of those. Now my preferred brand is a brand called Private Packs. So I will leave that linked in the description box below and I do have a discount code that will get you 15% off of your first order. Now I'm going to just speak about private packs. They are a personal pad made of a non-toxic gel. Now this can be placed in the freezer to make it into like a little ice pack, or you can either put it in the microwave for 10 seconds or put the private pack in a bowl of hot water, maybe not like burning hot, but like hot water, leave it in there for a little bit. And that warms it up. So it's kind of like a heat pad, but like for your vulva. So if you are, um, kind of irritated or in pain post-workout. Sometimes what I like to do is when I get home, I like to use the cold version and apply the kind of ice pack to the vulva. Now private packs do come with a protective sleeve. You don't have to use private packs, but if you do, no matter what you do, you want a protective layer, like a thin cloth or a towel, something like that, so that you're not actually going to 
burn the vulva and damage the vulva with the ice. So you put that in its little protective sleeve and you leave it on for about 15 minutes, usually no more than that. Sometimes they say you can do 20, but I wouldn't do more than 20. Um, and that can help kind of just reduce inflammation and take away some of that pain and discomfort. Alternatively, another thing that can be nice, and you can do this after you do the cold therapy or later in the day, is you can actually take that ice pack and make it warm. So that's like a little heating pad for the vulva. Now, if you think about it, when you do a workout and your muscles get really sore, a lot of the time we encourage heat, right? That's why a lot of people will do a big workout, their muscles are sore, they'll take a nice big hot or warm bath, right? To kind of help soothe and relax those muscles. Heat gets muscles to relax. And we have muscles down there just like we have everywhere else. So sometimes it can be nice to kind of give those muscles some relief, from all of that tension and that work. And so you apply the, the warm version of it and you just kind of put it in that area. And again, private packs are super discreet. They slip in your underwear and you can wear those in bed. You can wear them seated. You can wear them around your house um, and nobody has to know. So you can use the heat version to kind of get the muscles to kind of relax and calm down post-workout. So I like to play with hot and cold therapy sometimes after workouts, and especially if you're symptomatic, that can sometimes provide you with some relief. Tip number five, last tip is no matter what, make sure that you're giving yourself rest days. Again, this is something that is important irrespective of if you have lichen sclerosis. The body needs time to recover, to heal, and to repair. So you absolutely want to make sure that you are giving your body days off from exercise so that your body can actually take the time to do the healing and repair that it needs. So how many rest days you take really is going to depend on you, depends on your lifestyle, depends on how intense you're exercising. I usually like to take two rest days now. That said, I'm in remission and not symptomatic. So if I was symptomatic, I might do one day on, one day off to give myself more rest days in the beginning for my body to kind of adjust. So you play around with what works for you. Your rest days also might just be based on how busy you are. Like maybe you only have two days a week that you can work out and so you take five rest days. That's okay too, right? It's all about finding what fits into your lifestyle and what respects your body and your unique needs. But definitely make sure that you prioritize rest. All right, so we are gonna dive into some seated demonstrations of different exercises that you can try. Now for each of these exercises, I would recommend doing approximately three sets of maybe eight to 12 repetitions. That said, don't worry if you can't do that many. Maybe you only do one set and you only do eight reps. Maybe you do three sets of six reps. You play with it, right? Like my strength is gonna be different than yours. Everybody's gonna be a little bit different. But if you're just looking for like a little bit of guidance, a really common way to do exercises is three sets of eight to 12 reps. If it's a single body motion, like if it's one bicep curl with just one arm, then it's eight reps with this arm, then eight reps with this arm. If it's both at the same time, then it's just eight to 12 reps of this. So again, you can play around with how many reps and how many sets you do. I like to just keep it simple and do, you know, three sets of eight to 12, and that's kind of it. So we are now going to jump in to those exercises. The next exercises that I am going to show you are all seated in a chair. You can do this at home. You can do this in a gym, on a bench. You can get creative with your surroundings, but it's all seated in a chair. So this is really good if you are worried about tearing or you're just starting off, or if you, you, know, if you do tear a lot, anything like that, maybe starting with seated can be a good option because we're really minimizing. There's absolutely no friction because we're just sitting in the chair, right? From that area of our body, that kind of pelvic area, is very stable. So there's less rubbing and less friction. So if you're dealing with irritation or tears, this can be a good way that you can still get some exercise in, strengthening those muscles, strengthening that heart cardiovascular health by just staying seated. Again, part two is going to involve more dynamic movement. We're gonna be standing and doing some movement on the floor. Feel free to do mix and match from both. Again, find what works for you and your body. 
All right, so the first exercise is gonna be a simple biceps curl while you're seated. So two weights in your hand, soup cans, whatever you have, and then you are just going to curl the bicep, lower, curl, and lower. So you can do them single arm, and you can do them one at a time, like I'm doing here, or you can do them both at the same time. So you can just do this. And again, we're seated, so there's no kind of friction and movement on the vulva. We're just working our upper body here. And so for this one, you can try something like three sets of eight to 12 reps. Okay, so the next exercise we're gonna do is something called an overhead press. So you're gonna bring your weights around this angle, and then we're just going to press up. Bring it down to about shoulder height, and then press up. And again, you can do this anywhere from eight to 12 reps, whatever feels good for your body. And we're just pressing up. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is a tricep press. Again, these exercises might be called something different depending on where you live, but you'll see me do the movement. So here I've got my weight. I'm gonna hold it like this. And then I'm gonna bend the arms backwards like this and then press up with the triceps. So again, bending back and then pressing up. So I'll do this from a different angle so you can see. So bend back and then push up. Obviously just be careful that you don't knock yourself in the head with the weight as you're coming back up. But again, something that you can do to activate your triceps while you're seated. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of work the chest a bit. So I'm gonna start like this, kind of like we were doing for the pressing motion, but instead we're gonna do something like a chest press. So we're gonna have our arms like this, and then we're gonna rotate and bring them in and really squeeze the chest when you get here, bring it back out. And then again, as you're coming in, you're rotating and really squeezing that chest to get some good chest activation. So again, we can do this eight to 12 reps or whatever feels good for you and your body. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is a reverse fly. Now this is gonna target the back of your shoulders, so those deltoid muscles. So I'm just gonna get my hair out of the shot so that you can actually see. So again, two weights. You're gonna bend over in your seat and then you're gonna drop your arms down. And then all you're gonna do is just raise those arms up, really making sure that you squeeze at the top, then you bring them all the way back down. And then you up, really making sure that you squeeze those shoulder blades together and then bring it back down. The next thing you can try is some high punches. Now you can do this two ways. You can do this weighted or not. So not weighted, sitting in your chair, arms in a little fist, and then that, doing the high punch, you can bring up the intensity if you wanna get more of a cardiovascular workout and maybe get those abs involved, do that. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, you can grab your weights and do that same motion with the weights. So again, like this, and of course, you can always bring up the intensity. If you wanna make it more of a cardiovascular workout, you can do that. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're still gonna work our legs seated, okay? So this way we ensure that we can work our upper body and we can also still get our lower body in even if we're staying seated in the chair. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work our calf muscles, these lower leg muscles. So we're gonna do calf raises. I'm gonna show them two ways. So in your chair and you're just gonna raise your heels off the floor, pretend that you're wearing stiletto shoes, kind of really squeeze those calves at the top and then you'll bring them back down. So again, heels up, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze those calves at the top and then bring them back down. I'm gonna show you a different angle from the side so that you can hopefully see. So again, my feet are planted perfectly flat on the floor and then I'm gonna raise those heels up, squeeze those calf muscles and then bring them back down. Get those heels up off the floor, squeeze the calves and bring them back down. Now, if that's not challenging enough and you want a little bit more of a challenge, you can always add a weight. So you can just place that weight on top of the thighs, not on the knees, that might be a little painful. 
slightly higher than the knees. And then same principle, just heels up, squeeze those calf muscles at the top, and then bring it back down. Just from the side, we're doing the exact same thing, exact same motion. We've got that added weight, and then up, hold, and we'll squeeze those calves and bring it back down. So we did those calf muscles. So we've got the lower, the lower portion of our legs. Let's work the top of the legs a little bit. So what we're gonna do now is something called a leg extension. You can do this two ways, weighted or not weighted. So for the not weighted option, when both feet are planted flat on the floor, you're gonna do one side at a time. So I'm gonna start with my right. So you're gonna lift that leg until it's straight up like this. And I'm gonna show you from the other angle in a second. And you're gonna really try and squeeze and focus on squeezing that quad muscle, that upper front of your leg muscle. You're gonna squeeze that and bring it back down. And you're gonna bring it back up, squeeze at the top, and then bring it back down. Here's what it looks like from the side. Okay, I'm just gonna do the opposite leg so you can see better. Bring that leg up, squeeze that calf muscle right here, squeeze, 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 and then put it back down. And then you'll lift it up, squeeze at the top, and then bring it back down. Now, if you're like, all right, that's pretty easy, I want a little bit more of a challenge, there are different things that you can do to bring in some resistance. So, for example, you can get a band, some just, you know, off Amazon, grab a band, you can tie it to the base of the chair and then kick out with that band for extra resistance, or you can get these weighted little ankle weight things. So, kind of looks like this. Strap it around your ankle, and then you'll just kind of get the Velcro to the place that you want. So I think these are five pounds, come in various, various weights. You pick which works for you. So same principle, feet flat on the ground. You're gonna raise it up. And then again, you really wanna squeeze that, that upper muscle, that quad muscle at the top and bring it back down. Squeeze at the top and bring it back down. Okay, so this next one that we're gonna do, feel free to skip this if this feels like too much for you in the beginning. Again, it's all about finding what works for you and your body. We're all different. So what we're gonna do is a squat variation where we're gonna do a seated squat. So you have the chair for support so you're not going down as low as you might in a regular squat, which can sometimes be um, stressful for people that are prone to tearing. They get really anxious about kind of doing a deeper squat. So we're gonna do a squat so that we're still working our legs, but we're not going as deep as a regular squat. So I'm gonna show this from two angles. So you'll start in the seated position Feet flat on the floor, okay? And then you're gonna slightly lean forward and then push up. Then you're gonna kinda push your booty back as if you're trying to go into the chair. You can keep your arms up for stability. Kind of hit that chair a little bit and then pop back up. So I'm gonna show you from the other side because I think this is gonna be a lot more helpful. So rotate the chair like this. So you're standing, feet flat on the ground, and then you're gonna push back tap the chair, and then sit back up. Push back, tap the chair, and push back up. So my feet are still kind of close together, so I'm not super wide where my vulva might be in a more compromised position for tearing. My, my feet are hip distance apart, and I'm just slowly squatting down, tapping the chair, and then popping back up. Okay. So the last thing we're gonna do, you might be like, hey Jacqueline, what's up? You said this was a seated video and now you're standing. True, true, just hang with me. So the last thing that we're gonna do, again, optional, always listen to your body. You might need, you might find that during the first few months you're only doing the seated thing with the upper body and you're not doing any lower body. That's okay. Always follow what's good for you and your body. So this last one is something called a wall sit. So we are technically sitting, but it's quite challenging. It involves no weights. So you'll stand against a wall and then you kind of, again, keep your legs close together because we're being mindful of the vulvar area and not wanting to stretch it out too much so we're less likely to tear. And then put your weight against the wall and kind of slide down until you're at a kind of chair. It's as if I'm sitting back in that chair, but now I'm just holding myself up with my legs 
and my abs. So you can hold this for as long as you possibly can. This is an amazing exercise though, if you're looking to target your lower body, this gets the quads, this gets the hamstrings, this gets the glutes, it also gets some um, abdominal uh, muscle activity as well. So it's a great one to just hit that whole posterior chain close together to the legs. Now you can see that they're closer together. This might be more beneficial to you if you tend to tear or you're worried about tearing. This way again, we're just there's, there's less room for it to tear. So you can do anything from, you know, legs like this apart, or you can bring them completely in like this. Hold for about, you know, 15 to 30 seconds, however long you can, and then you'll just come back up like that. All right, beautiful soul. So that is it for our seated lichen sclerosis activity exercise video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you try some of these movements out. Please let us know in the comment section um, how you're currently exercising, if you're gonna try any of these movements out, um, what your favorite exercise is with LS. Please share that in the comments. And that is it for this video. I will catch you in the next one. Thank you.